Welcome to Holyoke Park Lodge. We are in Edinburgh between the Scottish Parliament and the Palace of Holyoke House. The building you see here served as one of the four entrance lodges to Holyoke Park. It is a mid 19th century building which is listed at Category B and it also sits within a Sergio Monument area and a design landscape. Generally, older buildings are thought of as poor energy performers or hard to heat, but we want to show they can be retrofitted with good energy standards and with minimal loss of historic fabric. Here at the lodge, we improve the energy performance of the building quite significantly. For those of you who are familiar with the Energy Performance Certificates or EPCs, we brought the building from an EPC in band F to band C. Do you want to know how we did that? Let's go inside. So the approach was to retain fittings and finishes from significant earlier phase of the building, but remove unsympathetic alterations such as wood chip or flash fire doors as part of a sensitive approach restoration scheme. We removed 1980s and 90s alterations and we restored traditional elements in the building. We decided to insulate the envelope of the, of the building internally with vapor permeable and natural derived materials. The floors were insulated at ground level using wood fibre board that sat underneath the timber suspended floors. Wood fibre board is a semi-rigid material. This one is 100 mm thick and, but you can get in different thicknesses. This was cut to size to fit the space between the joists. It's a naturally, naturally derived material that's quite breathable, as we say. Really, we mean a vapor permeable material. The floorboards were carefully lifted and set aside for reuse. We also had to use some new timber from a Scottish supplier, and you can clearly see the new floorboards against the original ones. The door was insulated with aerogel board. This is a thin material, about 5 mm thick, which was cut to the right side to the filter panels. Then plywood was added over and it was painted. All timber beading and mouldings were kept. Similarly, all existing hardware were retained. All the windows of the lodge were of different dates mostly being fitted as part of the 1995 repair works. They were single glazed casement type windows and they were in good condition, so the decision was taken to keep them and repair them. They were retrofitted with slim profile double glazed units from a Scottish supplier. So the insulated double glazed units were embedded in traditional linseed oil putty. Draft stripping was used to reduce oil infiltration and also some silicone beading was used in some areas for bigger gaps that were formed because of building settlement. The timber staircase had metal nosing and a modern covering. These were removed and the steps were repaired. Here we are in what was turning to a meeting room, and there's another secret panel here. This is the wall insulation, which is blown cellulose fibre. This is effectively threading newspaper, and you can see here how it sits on top of the masonry wall and behind the lath and plaster linings. At the lodge here, we didn't have a lot of space between the lath and plaster linings. It was about 38 millimeters, which is quite narrow. So a lot of holes had to be drilled into the wall to get the material and get a reasonable fill um, to the void. It's quite a good option, however, although it requires some redecoration afterwards and it's less disruptive than other methods, especially when you have original linings. Here we also reinstated the fireplace using a new stone surround at the hearth and we used the salvage cast iron insert that you can see here and we also put a dumper which is to control draft and can be removed if needed. Typically 25% of the heat is lost through a roof of building so insulating the roof is an effective and common means of reducing heat loss. So at the lodge we insulated the roof using wood fiber board again. Generally naturally derived materials are preferable because they can buffer moisture and prevent condensation issues. So, so we check what we did to the roof.
Here the insulation was put between the rafters, which gives us what we call a warm roof, which is quite good when you use your attic for storage or as a living space. The insulation is held in place by timber runners, which are fastened to the cheeks of the rafters, as you can see here. So the rafters can be deepened if required, and the conventional approach says that you should leave a 50 mm gap between the underside of the sarking and the top of the insulation to allow sufficient air movement throughout the roof, which is quite important when you're insulating a roof. So to test this, we actually left the 50 mm gap, but we also, in some areas, we pushed the insulation against the sarking because we do have vapor permeable materials. So we wanted to test this and monitor how they two would perform. In areas where the structure was visible, we covered the insulation with plywood and then that was painted with breathable clay paint, same as the ceilings throughout the lodge. Some areas of the lodge, due to having no or limited access to them, insulation has been installed between the ceiling joists. Wood fiber again, but also hemp insulation in some areas has been used to trial both materials. This here is one area where you can see how the insulation, pads or boards have been laid between the joists. So this is an office space which is used by our staff and we want to show you the other viewing panel here. Here you can see the insulation in the sloping ceilings. In Scotland these are called cooms and uh, they're effectively rooms that sit under the roof pitch and they're sometimes difficult areas to insulate and they present a, an increased level of complexity when doing energy efficiency assessments. But here at the lodge we had access from the attic space so we could go up and slide the panels down from the attic and because the material is quite soft it can actually pass by through variations in the thicknesses of the rafters. To improve the visual amenity and traditional character of the lodge we replace the light fittings with new but traditional style fittings to improve its ambience. And we also use LED bulbs throughout to save energy. All the modern doors, the internal ones, were replaced with traditional ones which were more in keeping with the character of the lodge. And during the redecoration, traditional details were reinstated like this timber corner detail called the quirk. Providing ventilation to roof spaces, especially following insulation works, is quite important. So at the lodge, we reopen block windows at high level, such as this little quarter light at the entrance hall. And we installed a pulley just to make it easy to use and maintain. And this is quite good to have ventilation to avoid condensation issues following insulation works. We also installed grill flue vents where we can reinstate the fireplaces, such as this hit and miss grill you can see here. We also cleared and cleaned external vents to allow sufficient air infiltration throughout the building. Part of the works at the lodge involved long-term monitoring of the external and internal conditions of the lodge before and after the works. This involved U-value testing, which is basically how fast heat transfers through a structure, hydrothermal monitoring, which is about temperature and humidity, and air tightness testing. The monitoring lasted for two years and finished this summer. The monitoring actually showed much lower relative humidity level post refurbishment work and when the building is heated. The thermal performance of the walls was also improved by 39%. So remember uh, at the roof when we actually pressed the insulation against the sarkin and where we left the 50 mm recommended gap. So post monitoring the results actually showed a similar level of humidity which actually shows us that when capillary active and vapor open materials are used the internal humidity is actually controlled and when the roof is winter watertight, moisture doesn't build up. A building energy assessment was carried out before and after the works to assess how the building performs. This is to get an energy performance certificate or EPC, which for those of you who are not aware, this is basically a, a way of assessing and comparing the energy and environmental performance of dwellings. Before the works, the building was a band F, which is quite low, but standard of many unimproved traditional buildings. After the works, it reached band C, which is a huge improvement considering there was no loss of historic fabric. In 2022, we're hoping to have another phase of works and possibly employ the use of a renewable, such as an air source heat pump. In cities where there are district heating schemes, it may be easier to reach the desired energy standards. But with rural properties, which are off the gas grid, you may need to use the use of a renewable system or another energy storage just to get you over the line. 
So I hope you enjoyed our tour today and that it gave you some inspiration on how to improve your older building. Thank you for watching.